Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Rune News. I'm your host, Ryan Ryan, and it's bloody good to have you guys here today. It has been an entire week now since Valamor was released to Old School RuneScape, and it has been a massive week for the game indeed. Content creators have been streaming all sorts of content and having a great time. It's been very successful for everybody involved, and I'm sure you guys as the players are also having a blast either watching and playing alongside or just doing your own thing and experiencing Valamor for what it is. Jagex has done an excellent job releasing this content and I have two questions for you this week to answer in this video. However, the second question will be happening in the Iron Man moments because the context is completely necessary and it's it's gonna be a good fucking question. Trust me, you're gonna wanna answer that one. But in the meantime, in the comment section down below, I would like to know what you think of Valamor, what your favorite piece of content is, and if you've been successful at trying to obtain your quiver in the Colosseum yet. Let us know down below. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there. I'd greatly appreciate the support. My name is Ryan Ryan, and you're watching Rune News. This week's update for Old School RuneScape consists of Easter and Valamore updates. We'll go over the Easter event very quickly. You guys might remember the birthday event this year. Basically, you walked into the Falador party room, left click the table, and it's done. The best event Jagex has ever done. I don't think the Easter event is anything like that, so it's immediately dog shit. I don't want to put effort into an event just for a couple of emotes. I'm going to have to anyway, unfortunately, but for future reference, Jagex, a one-click event is the best kind of event. If you disagree with me, then that's fine. If you like doing these events, go straight for it, but I personally don't care enough, so we're going to move on to Valamore Part 1 Feedback Changes. Now, Jagex has put a cute little chart out here on the website, which you can obviously go check out. Hunter Guild stats, gold spent on death reclaims at the Coliseum and the Perilous Moons, Fortis Coliseum... Uh, Kill counts and waves completed, and then behind me, house robberies. A lot of very cool numbers here to check out. I'll let you have a quick sneak peek, a quick sticky beak at the chart there. Obviously, the room is completed. How many times people have pet Hunter Kiko and then the pets? It's only 2,050 pets, but 178 Rocky pets, although 1.6 billion GP has been uh, earned from thieving houses. Not bad, good size. However, the deaths in Perilous Moons now. Look, I'm not going to judge anyone. I died once in Perilous Moon, so I was too busy watching Breaking Bad. So we're going to move on. But cool stats. I like when Jagex does this shit. Looking forward to seeing more information uh, in the near future on many different updates. What have we got here? Fortis Coliseums. All they've done now is that they have uh, fixed the description of Doom, which now correctly states uh, that the effect applies to any damage taken, not just taken off prey, which means if you Divine Potion in the Coliseum, that's, uh, you're getting affected with Doom. So basically, Doom is still shit. Don't pick it unless you really want to challenge yourself. That's the only change in the Colosseum for now, but I have heard down the grapevine that you should not be splashing on the melee uh, barbarian at the start, the Fremenic, the, the melee one. Like, you meant to one-hit him with mage, yet people still splash. I think that's a bug they're looking to fix, hopefully within the next week or two. So for now, that's not being fixed. It's another week of cancer, but otherwise, not many changes to the Colosseum, which means Jagex is very comfortable and happy with how that content's being run so far. As for the Hunter's Guild, now... There's a few different things here that they've changed. One, they've tweaked the loot sacks to indicate which tier hunter rumors they came from. Uh, they've also had to toggle, they, they, they've added a toggle which prevents you from receiving the same hunter's rumor back to back. It's toggled on by default, but you can change it using the new rumor settings option in the guild scribe verity, or on guild scribe verity, whatever the hell that means. The hunter's skill cape and the max cape now say hunter areas instead of chin chomper teleports for the teleport options. And the Sunlight and Moonlight Antelopes now respawn much faster. There's less trees in the way, so they don't get blocked too much. And if you get the Sunfire Splinters, it'll actually go on your collection log, which is really nice. Pie Foxes have also been changed this week. I know you guys were really wanting this to be improved because they're just a, a shit contract to do at the moment, or the rumor. So I'm going to read out this description, the, the paragraph, word for word for you, so everyone knows exactly what's happening with the Pie Foxes this week. <clears throat> Excuse my English. Pyre Foxes have also had a look over. We've added more of them for a start and shifted the traps in the north and east of the area to face where they like to hang out. Pyre Foxes have had a look over too and we've shifted the traps in the north and east of the areas to face where the foxes like to hang out. Not only that, but we've also seen more Pyre Foxes within that region. Now don't worry, you're not having a stroke. I too have no clue what the fuck that means. If you think I'm kidding, have a look here. It's not even copy pasted the sentence. It's just been written essentially three times. I guess we'll find out exactly what's happening with Pyre Foxes when we load up the game after the update in 13 minutes. Uh, the Red Chin Chompers, now they say actually bring back the Chin Chomper fur other than what it was doing 
previously, and they've improved the overall look of various pitfall creatures so that you have a better time removing them from the area. To be honest, the hunter changes aren't really that big or different, but I mean, it's still nice to have a look at. And then we've got the Perilous Moons. Now this is gonna be interesting for a few people. The Eclipse Moon boss now has a higher defense. That's the yellow one, I believe. The Blue Moon boss uh, builds cold twice as fast and heals more consistently during the tornado phase, which makes sense because of the tornado phase, you can just AFK and not actually do. Jagex wants you to be involved and actually do the content. So it looks like you're not AFK in the tornado phase anymore. The Blood Moon boss healing on its third attack has been reduced, but the healing from the Jaguar has been increased slightly. Not a bad rebalance. The fishing activity now interrupts repeatable actions like fletching, so you can remain focused on the task at hand. Speaking of which, we've made it clearer of fi that fishing guarantees one fish, although you can obtain fish Two fish with successful skill check. Look, you can get more fucking fish. You've got a high fish level. That's what it's trying to say. Uh, PVPers with the Eclipse at 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 lat at lat at lat at lat at latterly at latterly. The, the, the yellow one, the yellow weapon, uh, they've got great results in PVP, but they're going to increase the attack to 50 so that the uh, the lower brackets are not being dominated by obsidian moles. Whatever that means, I don't have a clue. And then last but not least, there's a bug where players were always asked, are you sure you want to enter the Perilous Moons boss? Hopefully, that's now gone for good. Thank God. Now we've got a few other missed changes, like they corrected blocking tiles in the Rallus Rise. Uh, world hopping in the thiev uh, for thieving in Bazaar is a lot easier. The medium clue anagram behaved like a challenge scroll. Uh, don't know what that means. More um, trees are cuttable in the savannah. And the master clue that requires you to perform the salute with the Blue Moon set now requires a regular salute instead. Pussy shit, but I mean... <laughs> That's people complaining about master clues for you. Uh, that's pretty much mostly it. To be honest, the other changes are pretty much dead. Like there's nothing important here. The Eastern Merch looks like absolute dog shit. And LMS is no longer on Oswald, so I can go a whole week now without being tilted and rage quitting uh, because Venge Bolt Raggers seem to have the best RNG in the game. My name is Ryan Ryan. We're going to do RuneScape 3. Then we're going to do Grand Exchange. And then the second and most important question of the episode will be coming your way very soon. Thank you. There has been so much attention on Old School RuneScape this week with the successful launch of Valamore. Almost everyone has forgotten that RS3 existed, which is one of the greatest things to happen on the internet to date because RuneScape 3 is fucking dog shit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Grand Exchange segment for Rune News. My name is Wade Green, and this week the Sunfire Splinters are obviously popping the fuck off. This is a great way to make money. Basically, what everyone is doing is they are doing the first wave of the Colosseum and then leaving and generating a lot of money. Some have reported up to 8 million GP per hour, and I recommend you trying this method if you want to make a quick buck because people need 150,000 of these to charge their quivers, and people are getting their quivers out the wazoo at the moment, which means main accounts, I believe, are spending anywhere between 120 to 150 mil just to charge their quiver, which will give them an extra, I believe, one strength bonus and six accuracy. Could be wrong on the numbers. Don't really know. Don't really care. Sunfire Splinters are the way to go if you want to make some money today. Now, as predicted last week, I did say the Justice Armor set would dip back down to where it is, and what do you know? On the day, on the fucking dot, Justice Shagir is back where it's meant to be, and that was a guarantee by Wade Green, so rest in peace if you tried to invest and you lost money in this section here. Now, the Twisted Bow is struggling to make a recovery. People are saying that this was going to hit max cash stack 2.14 bill for the T-Bow. Suck a fucking dick. This thing's going to keep dropping towards 1.4 bill. It's a guarantee because it's not needed inside the Colosseum. It was overhyped, and we know for a fact that the T-Bow is sitting there being merged by people trying to make money off of you fellas that can only afford one, maybe two T-Bows. If you don't want to get scammed, you want to make sure that you are buying it for 1.4, 1.5 bill. Don't let these merching assholes that sit there at home in their basement all day jacking off over the GE. Don't let them try and squeeze you out of a couple extra hundred mil. It is not worth the money. Twisted Bow will hit 1.4 bill as the year goes on as a guarantee. And now for the mole slippers. There has been some speculation around me trying to plummet the price with a tier list. I haven't released yet, but I did do live where I put the mole slippers in E tier bracket. Now, I'm not invested in mole slippers. I don't have any money in mole slippers. I play an Iron Man. But if I was to invest in mole slippers, legally speaking, this is hypothetical, and there was a mountain range behind me, I would want to be up the top by the time they hit 30 mil by the end of this year or unsubscribe. Mark my fucking words. They're currently at 980k. They could hit 30 mil easily within the next 6 to 8, 12 months. 
So you want to be up as high as possible on the mountain range and everyone else that invests after you that you would obviously tell about the mole slippers would then be investing, pushing your stocks up and it's a pretty simple system. So if I was to invest in mole slippers, I'd be buying them now while they're on the low and they're going to start rising again. Mole slippers will easily hit 30 mil by the end of the year and if you don't buy in now, then you're never going to make the money. My name is Wade Green and this is the Grand Exchange segment for Rune News. That's a big boy. Our first Ironman moment for the week goes to Fat Dubs, who I don't think is an Ironman, but completed the Chaos Elemental Collection log in like 30 kills. Completely done with the pet and all the other drops. Too bad he can't take a screenshot to save his fucking life, but GZ on the luck. Next up, we have the player 45321678 getting the Armadale Crossbow at 21 KC, and then the Commander Ziliana pet two kills later at 23 KC. So not only does he have a ridiculously stupid name, but he's also got ridiculously stupid RNG, and he's just a ridiculously stupid person because this is the sort of screenshots that that motherfucker takes. 1080p is all I need. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the big second question of the video for you to answer in the comment section down below. I apologize for milking it to the end, but trust me, it's worth it. From Wizzy received his Dianza's Quiver yesterday, I believe it was. Now, this guy is well known for paying for his Infernal Cape. We know about this. We've seen the screenshots. We've got proof of the transaction, and it took him like another year to go and get his Infernal Cape properly after many deaths and attempts. So the question for you guys to answer in the comment section down below today is how much did Prom Wizzy pay this time for Deanza's Quiver? Do you think he paid more than the Infernal Cape or do you think he paid less? It was, you know, within the first week of release, but the Colosseum does take a lot less time to complete, which means there's a lot less labor going into it for the Infernal Capes. I don't actually know the prices. I just know for a fact that this guy, we're just going to assume he bought the Quiver because... Why not? It's funny to accuse people who have bought content like that before. Answer in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching this week's episode of Rune News. My name is Ryan Ryan. Much love to you all, guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all tomorrow in the live stream. My name is Ryan Ryan, and you're watching Rune News. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him. God damn. Fuck, mate. Look at that boy. It's huge.